Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start filling up our bucket with uh, star sand or water. And then we're gonna add about one ounce of star sand. Since your kit comes with a star sand that doesn't have a pre-measuring tool, most, most people have a shot glass, so you can use shot glass to get an estimation most shot glasses are an ounce and a half so you only get about three quarters full of a shot glass and then that should be plenty now on the star sand when it dries you want to make sure that you keep this stuff wet if it dries out you need to reapply it because it's no longer sanitary. Also remember, if you do have some star sand available or you're doing some other type of, if you're like if you're racking or something like that, you can always soak all of your other equipment in this as well. So we're gonna put our lid and our airlock as well as our thermometer and a new tool that we're going to use here in a few minutes our hydrometer okay this tool here is actually our hydrometer and what it's used for is actually to test the sugar in solution now it's really expensive to have a tool that actually tests alcohol so what we're going to do is we're going to test the sugar beforehand and the sugar afterwards and that what that allow us to do is that'll tell us how much alcohol we've made and that's going to go here in our sanitizer as well. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're testing our, our temperature to see exactly where we're at. Hopefully we're getting pretty cool. Now the thermometer, just remember, is fresh out of the star sand. So we've actually got this pretty cool already. It's already at about 85 degrees. So. What we're going to be able to do is we'll be able to cool it the rest of the way down with our cold water that we have in the refrigerator. All right, okay, now that we have our bucket sanitized, we're going to add our beer that's in our pot in to our bucket. Now this is a very good idea at this point. You want to oxygenate your wort. It's very important for yeast to be able to reproduce. So what I do without an oxygenation system is just basically splashing the wort into the, the fermenter. Now you might want to do this outside. You can potentially make a big mess, but for our purposes here, we're just going to pour in the bucket. And you can see too that we have star sand right in there. No big deal. Have a little bit of foam, that's fine. Okay, I got a little bit of hot particles. I don't necessarily need to get all of that in there. If you get some in there, no big deal. I'll just leave most of that behind and pour that down the sink. Okay, now what we're going to do now at this point is to add our cold water up to the five gallon mark. And like I said earlier, we had gotten the wart down already all the way down to 85 degrees. Now you can get it down to probably about 100 degrees before you add the cold water and that'll probably take you down to about your pitch temperature. Now what I did is I did save a little bit of star sand so I could put my hydrometer, my airlock, as well as my uh, thermometer. So we're going to test, make sure our wart temperature is not too hot before we add our yeast okay so all 
All right. That two gallons puts us right at the five gallon mark. So we're going to be able to test our temperature now and make sure that we're not too hot. Okay, so we're sitting right at 70 degrees, which is actually pretty cold. So that's not a bad thing. You just don't want to get it too terribly cold, but 70 degrees will work just fine. Now, the next thing is, is we're going to take a hydrometer reading. This is going to tell us how much sugar is in solution. On your kit, you're going to have an original gravity and a final gravity. Now, these are estimations. Sometimes they will be close, sometimes they'll be way off, but more often than not, they're gonna be really close to your, your numbers. So what we're gonna do is, you can use this a couple different ways. We got this straight out of the sanitizer, so we're gonna put it right into the wart and see approximately what we're looking at. Now with this much foam, it's pretty hard to tell exactly where our wart's at, so, uh, or our gravity reading is at, so we need to let me move this around a little bit. Okay. Looks like we're about at 1042. If I'm not mistaken, that's pretty close to where we're supposed to be on our original gravity. We're actually supposed to be at 1046, but that's pretty close. So we may be at a couple tenths of percent off, but that's not gonna have an effect on the overall beer. You also have to remember too that this, this hydrometer is calibrated at 60 degrees, so uh, it will make a difference if it's a little warmer. All right, so. We're going to record that down as 1042, and we're going to add our yeast at this point. Okay, guys. What we have here is our SO4. This is our dry English ale yeast. Um, this is a really good yeast. We recommend for beginners especially to use dry yeast. There's a lot of advantages to dry yeast over liquid yeast. Uh, the, the one thing that you have as far as drawback as far as dry yeast is there's not as big a selection. Uh, so, but for beginning sake, I would highly, highly recommend using dry yeast. And later on, you might be interested in starting doing starters in order to do liquid yeast. Because at Texas Brewing, we highly recommend that you do a starter before you use liquid yeast on all liquid yeast. I pulled these scissors right out of the uh, sanitizer so uh, we don't have to worry about contaminating our yeast. Now there's a lot of debate on whether to rehydrate or not to rehydrate. We've found at Texas Brewing that the benefits don't outweigh the consequences of by rehydrating. So what we recommend to do is actually pitch it directly on top of the wart, just like you see there. Now it's very, very important. We talked about this earlier, that you make sure that your wart's not too hot because you will kill your yeast. Okay, so now that we have our lid sanitized, our bucket sanitized, and we have our yeast pitched, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our lid on. And I've got sanitizer all over my hands. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna aerate the wart, okay? It's really important to have oxygen in your beer. And the reason being is because in order for a yeast to reproduce, they have to have oxygen available. So while we're gonna do that is we're gonna shake the bucket for two solid minutes. And you can do this just by putting your hand over the thumb, thumb hole, because I've got sanitizer all over my hands. And I'm going to shake this for a good two solid minutes. A 
Okay, now once we're done shaking this, we're actually going to put some either some sanitizer or some, uh, the best thing to do is actually put vodka or a cheap vodka in your airlock. Okay, so after shaking that for two minutes, you're gonna put your airlock. Now it's important to find a good, cool place in your house. And we're gonna talk more about that here in just a second. Well, there you have it. You just brewed your first beer. We hope you enjoyed uh, us showing this, the different steps that it takes to make your first beer. It's real simple, right? Okay, so now that we have our beer in our fermenter, the next thing we have to do is we need to make sure to find a nice temperature controlled environment, preferably in your house somewhere. Don't stick it out in your garage where the temperature is gonna go up and down. The idea is to keep it below 75 degrees. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this set for about a week, and then we're gonna come back and do a second episode and teach you how to move it into a secondary and also to bottle it. Until then, make sure to check out texasbrewing.com. Uh, that's T xbrewing.com and for all your brewing needs.